All right, gentlemen. Uh, welcome back to the old computer shack. Uh, here are two Tandy 1000HX motherboards. Um, I only have one working power supply between the two of them because of some some dumbassery the other day. But um, this one's got some problems with the composite video output. So let me show you the one where everything is fine first, then I'll show you the one where everything isn't fine. Okay, so the composite monitor is on the top and the CGA monitor is on the bottom, so we've got this board hooked up at the moment. Let's hit the power and see what happens. Alright, so uh, we have shit on both screens. Everything looks fine. I mean, the composite video output in 80 column mode is pretty shitty, but that's to be expected from uh, from composite video in general. It's not uh, it's not the machine, it's just the way composite video is. But the uh, and the output on the CGA monitor looks great as one would expect. So uh, let me switch the power supply over to this other board and show you what this board does. Alright, so uh, let's power up this board and see what happens. So on the CGA monitor everything looks fine. But if we look up here at the composite monitor, well, it's another story. Uh, that looks like ass, doesn't it? Looks like ass. So, uh, something weird's going on here. Um, we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to figure out what. So, um... I think uh, the easiest way to figure this out, I, I, have, I have a sneaking suspicion it's one or the other of these uh, video amplifier transistors here, but I'm not 100% sure. But uh, I think the, the easiest thing to do is to just hook the uh, oscilloscope up to the board that works, um, see what the video signal looks like at various places nearby here, and then compare that uh, to this board, and hopefully then we will be able to determine what component is faulty and replace it. So let me get that set up. I'll be right back. All right, so uh, I was just inspecting this board a little bit before uh, before testing things, and uh, I don't know if you can see this or not, but on the the base of the center uh, center conductor of this RCA jack right here, look at that big uglified solder blob right there and look at it close and you can see that it I don't think I don't think it's adhering to uh, to the leg of that see there it looks like there's a little crack around it there that, that that looks like a cold solder joint to me, and I don't know why that blob is so big either, because uh, if you look at the other board here that works, it looks like a... Uh, I'll focus. I mean, it, it looks it looks perfectly normal. So, um, I, w I wonder if... Uh, I wonder if the video connector was subjected to, like, uh, force, you know, like if something was plugged into it and it got bent, you know, and broke that back there. And then it was kind of soldered back on shittily. But I think most people that use these machines used the um, the TTL RGB output, not the composite video output. So I don't know. I don't know what uh, what to think. Uh, let's just clean it up and see what it looks like. So um, yeah, the. The continuity between the end of the pin and the uh, uh, inside of the connector here is fine. So uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, with this connector. I think uh, maybe this was where someone else had been trying to fix it sometime in the past. So I'm just going to. Uh, oops. I'm just going to resolder that thing and make it nice and pretty again and then we'll uh, then we'll start investigating other things. Yeah, I had to break out all faithful. I couldn't figure out how to uh, how 
to get a video signal to appear right on that thing, but um, the, the, the intensity control on this thing's broken, so I can't turn the brightness down. Um, so it looks a lot brighter on the camera than it does to the naked eye, but um, that's I've only got the uh, volts per division here set on uh, 2 millivolts per division, so that seems awfully low, and anyway, that's that's what our uh, video line looks like, um, just for reference's sake. This is with the board with the shitty output, so um, let's look at the other board and see how it compares. And uh, yeah, obviously we've got a much hotter signal here coming out of this one. Uh, I had it set to 2 microvolts per division before, and we've got to cut this down significantly, down to 10 microvolts per division to get it to fit there now. So, um, the, uh, I mean, aside from the, um, oh, this scope is, so, uh, this scope needs rebuilt so bad. <laughs> aside from the, um, aside from the low intensity of the signal, uh, it looks to me like the uh, the actual content of the signals is the same, so that bodes well. It probably is just one of those transistors. So um, uh, let's poke around on this board here a little bit and see what it looks like. All right, now you can see the screen. Well, I've got you on the stand. Take the probe off here, and uh, I'm going to look at. Uh, all three legs of this transistor. Now, there was a video signal if I could stay on it. So this sucker here is the video amplifier transistor that I was looking at the wrong one the first time. That is, uh, so on one side we should have a low video level and on the other side we should have Let's grab the other board and look at it. Alright, there's our super low intensity video signal. Now let's try the middle leg. And there is a significantly higher video signal. Very low video signal significantly higher video signal. So that, um, that leads me to think that that transistor probably really is the problem. It's 3904. I have two, two M3904s in the drawer. Excellent! So, it appears to be... Where's my pointing device? Covered in flux, of course. So, uh, I don't have the uh, documentation for this transistor handy, so I can't tell you which is the emitter base and the collector, but um, it's this transistor right here that we're getting the different reading on. And uh, with the other board, I got uh, roughly equal measurements on both of these two legs. Um, on this transistor, I get uh, a measurement that's the same on the middle leg and that really low measurement that must go on out here to the connector uh, here on the outside leg. So let's fire the desoldering gun back up, suck that bastard out of there, and uh, solder a new one. All right, let's see. Well, that was a that was a two n thirty nine o four two n thirty nine o four should be. Where are my tweezing apparatus? Should be these. Of course, I can't read the damn text on the shitting thing. 2N3904. Alright. Hopefully that'll fix it. If not, we'll have to uh, look at some of the resistors and capacitors nearby. But these are all ceramic capacitors and they don't go bad and all of the resistors look fine. So I'll bet you... I'll bet you this will do it. Oh man, that thing looks good. So much 
much better than that other one. Flux off of there. Don't want that laying around. All right, let's try it and see what our video looks like. Hot diggity, boys. That was the problem. Looking good now. Alright, well, that motherboard is fixed, unless I got the motherboards confused. Um, let me go check the other one just to be sure I didn't just replace the transistor on the one that worked. Because that's the kind of shit that I do. Alright, well, that did it. Uh, we have two good working Tandy 1000 HX motherboards now. I mean, it worked before, just the composite video output didn't, but you know. Nobody used it anyway, but now everything actually works right, and, and that's and that's good. So um, now I'm just going to have to uh, find another power supply if I want to put two machines together. That's uh, lo I looked on I looked on eBay for an entire like Tandy 1000 HX power supply. The EX power supply is probably exactly the same. If if any of you guys have a spare Tandy 1000 power supply laying around. A Tandy 1000 EX or HX power supply laying around. Let me know. I'd, I'd probably give you a few bucks for it if it's not too outrageous. But um, barring that, um, this doesn't. These these boards don't require negative five volts. All they need is uh, positive five volts and positive and negative twelve volts. So um, my thought is that uh, I might just try to get one of those little. Uh, mini ATX power supplies like those bitty bitty ones that are designed to just plug straight down into like an, uh, into a board and I mean a modern one ought to uh, ought to be able to supply the same current that this this old thing does you know just in a smaller form factor yeah so I guess that's it for this video uh, the next video will finish up the Tandy 1000 HX stuff um, we'll take the best parts and assemble them into one machine and then we'll take the second best parts and assemble them all into another machine and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the plus bus I do have um, a correction to issue about the last video regarding the uh, the bus latching on the 8086 and the 8088 um, but I don't want to waste your time with that in this one but um, I was kinda right and kinda wrong at the same time anyway we'll talk about that in the next video and uh, after we um, after we get the Tandy 1000 HXs put back together, we'll try to get back to that Model 4 over there. Because I'm anxious uh, to see if I can get it to boot a disc. But uh, making a boot disc for it may be the most complicated part of the procedure. I'll have to. I don't have any 360k five and a quarter inch disc drives anymore. Um, I know that's sacrilegious for someone that's into old computers but it's true so um, uh, I'll have to I'll have to take one of the disk drives out of the model 4 and plug it into an old PC that's got a floppy controller and use it uh, to write some some disk images to actual floppies and then put the working floppy back into the model 4 because it looks like at least one of the floppy drives in that thing's hosed uh, I couldn't hear any head movement anyway on the one that's acting as the zero drive. Uh, yeah, that's 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 it for now. Um, see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a lovely evening.